Medicines don't do this, by the way. Medicines actually will take things down to zero. It's like medicines, like it's, it doesn't. It's not a scalpel. It's a hammer slamming things down. So foods actually have the unique ability to be able to do things that medicines can't. Now, what about regeneration? When I was uh, growing up, as I'm sure most of you, we were told that um, people don't ge regenerate. Starfish regenerate, and salamanders can regenerate. And the way that they regenerate is by using stem cells. That's how a starfish that's missing an arm will grow a uh, new, le new leg for a, from a salamander. But it turns out that we're all regenerating. We all have stem cells inside our bodies. And these stem cells are being used all the time. That's why our hair grows back after a haircut. That's why our skin, you know, that's why you get um, uh, dandruff. That's why our gut uh, replaces itself. Uh, that's why our liver is able to regenerate. We do regenerate, just often not that quickly. But we generate, we regenerate in important ways throughout our existence. And the question is, when do stem cells come into play? Stem cells come into play for regeneration when we're injured. So this is actually showing that in 25 patients in Italy who suffered a burn and went to an emergency room, got admitted to the hospital, and they just measured their blood at different day, time points. And over the course of the hospitalization, you can see starting from the time of admission to the hospital, more and more and more stem cells came out because the stem cells which live in our bone marrow are trying to heal up that skin in the wound. That's regeneration. That's a kind of real bona fide regeneration. And the greater the injury, the more the stem cells have to come out. More injury, more stem cells needed, right? We need to regenerate more furiously. And in fact, for cardiovascular disease, this was from the New England Journal of Medicine, a very important paper out of Germany that showed if you just took people who were getting uh, you know, their, their angiography, um, as you saw with the dyes being shot, and you measured their blood and seeing how many stem cells are naturally in their blood, you can see that the group in blue who had more stem cells in their blood actually had fewer they, they did a lot better. They survived longer. They had fewer cardiovascular events. The ones who didn't do as well in green had fewer stem cells. More stem cells, more regeneration, more repair of the heart, longer survival. Less stem cells, you're in trouble. Now, here's the problem. As we age, our stem cells also um, start to lose their punch. We have less of them. The ones that we have don't work quite as well. This is just a kind of a, a natural part of, of our life cycle. But, uh, and, and because of that, um, uh, there are a number of diseases where impairments of stem cells um, are important. So when you have hair loss, alopecia, baldness, Alzheimer's disease, stem cells in the brain, um, uh, uh, asthma, you, can't, you get scarring and you actually don't have enough stem cells to keep repairing the lungs. Um, uh, erectile dysfunction, I put, it, I put it back there. Also not enough stem cells, they're actually using stem cells as a treatment uh, for that. Ischemic heart disease, macular degeneration, there's some amazing reports coming out of England now of people who are having stem cells injections of their eyes that regenerate their retina and they're able to get some vision back from being legally blind. Stem cells, as we get older, are weaker. If we could actually replace them with stem cell therapies, it is really a whole new future of medicine. And that's really what the biotechnology world is doing. I'm involved with that. I've been involved with that for well over a decade. But that's biotechnology. You're talking about a billion dollars at 10 years, unknown safety issues. What about food? Do foods stimulate stem cells? And the answer is yes. First one I want to show you is cacao or chocolate. It turns out that studies have been done where if you take um, high ch chocolate with high flavanols and make a hot chocolate out of it, and you drink it just twice a day, two cups a day uh, for 30 days, you can start by measuring your stem cells, and, and this is from 16 subjects, and you can make the stem cell levels go up. This is two cups of hot chocolate, of high flavanol hot chocolate, just twice a day. By the way, all of these patients had cardiovascular disease. They had documented blockages in their arteries in their heart, and they could get more stem cells going. That is a small study, but really, really interesting to think about. So again, we need to pay attention to what kind of studies these are. This is a clinical trial. Um, it's a small study, but it, it actually is really important because it correlates with some of the other information I showed you. A larger study, 20,000 people in Germany showed that, um, e e that those who ate 7.5 grams of chocolate per day lowered the risk of heart attack or stroke by 39%. Okay, what is 7.5 grams of chocolate? It's about three chocolate chips. Got to be dark chocolate. <laughs> Not that much. 
and you know, it's, by the way, I want to say it's not the dairy and the chocolate. It's not the sugar and the chocolate. It is that natural chemical in cacao. 